Okay, welcome everyone. It is February 8th. Can you believe it's already February? And here we are at Theme Thursday for the Pastel Society of Southern California. We want to welcome all of you. We had a beautiful sunny day in California after many, many days of rain. And wherever you're coming from, wherever you are in the world or the United States, we hope you're staying warm and we hope you're looking forward to a fabulous night because our guest tonight is Mike Ishikawa. You can wave, Mike. I'm going to pin you in a minute. And Mike is a longtime member of the Pastel Society of Southern California. He is currently our vice president. He is an award-winning artist and architect. He has won, boy, he's gotten honorable mentions in the Pastel Journal. He's been in the IAP shows. He's just a fabulous painter, a fabulous person. We're so happy to have him here tonight. And I'm going to turn it over to Mike because he's going to do a demonstration for us and then address some other pastel topics. Mike, are you unmuted? Let's, there. I am, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Welcome. Hi. Yeah, welcome, Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. I'm I'm so, so happy. I'm turning uh, it over to you. Yeah, thank you for, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining our meeting. Um, I thought I'd kind of talk about how my painting career got off to a start. First of all, you know how people, when they do a Zoom, they always uh, are in front of the screen. And in back of them, they have all these wonderful books that shows them how intelligent they are and everything. Well, here's my backdrop. It's a sloppy room with, <laughs> with a sanded paper that you're looking at, which is, um, which is gonna be my demo for tonight. Um, this is the demo that I'll be doing today. It's Compic Lake. And it's one of my favorite lakes in the Sierras. <clears throat> anyway, uh, my painting career started in um, 2009. I was uh, looking for something to do besides my sketching. And so I was walking around the lawn show at at the uh, Malaga Cove Plaza. And guess who I ran into? I ran into um, Lynn and Margaret. Oh, I see all these little black spots. I had them burned off two days ago. So I look like um, I had smallpox or something, but ignore that. Anyway, yeah, I ran into Lynn and uh, Margaret and they told me they were gonna start a pastel society in Southern California. So I thought, wow, that sounds like a wonderful opportunity. So I immediately joined. And I must have been at least the third or fourth member to join besides the, the three founding members. So that's that was my start of my career in pastels. I didn't know a damn thing about pastels. I didn't even own any pastels at the time. And the first set I bought was a set of new pastels, <clears throat> which I really didn't like. So then I bought a set of Rembrandts that I didn't like. And then I finally bought a set of Sennelier's and those were my favorite pastels to date. And I fell in love with them. And I started taking classes. One of my first classes that I took that I was uh, unable to get into was a class with Joe Mancuso. Uh, Joe is a member of our Pastel Society and he's a wonderful painter. And he was teaching a class in Manhattan Beach. And I, I asked if I could join the class. And he said, well, you know what, Mike? Uh, the class is only open for Manhattan Beach residents. And when there's not enough people from Manhattan Beach, uh, you're welcome to sign up. But he says, I've got a secret for you, Mike. He says, if you uh, tell me uh, that you're really anxious to get started, give me your phone number. And then when somebody calls me and tells me that they can't attend the class, I'll give you a call. So I started getting these calls from Joe to join the class and I was able to, to enter his uh, pastel classes. And uh, that was really my really first beginning of getting some structure in my painting. And Joe was a wonderful teacher and uh, I love painting landscapes. And, and that was really my first start. And that's where I met Fran. Fran, you know, everybody knows Fran Nichols, right? She passed away about three years ago. 
wonderful painter. And I fell in love with, with Fran's paintings. And she was a member of the class. And so we took the class with Joe for about three, about four years. And I started getting better and better and better. And um, eventually Joe got burned out. And so he he asked me if I wanted to teach a class. And I thought, Joe, I, I mean, I can't teach a class. I mean, <laughs> uh, but but I said, well, I think you're good enough to teach, Mike. So why don't you teach a class? I said, Joe, I don't want, a, I don't want a, a, a job, but I'll ask Fran if she wants to teach the class. And so Fran said, well, I'd love to teach a class, but I don't want to teach every week either. So she she offered to share the class with me. So we both decided to teach the class together. We asked Manhattan Beach if that would be okay. And they said, yes, that'd be all fine. So Fran and I started sharing the class, teaching pastels in Manhattan Beach. And that went on until about 2020 when COVID hit and that put an end to our teaching career. And uh, prior to that, you know, I, I've taken almost every workshop that Pastel Society has brought out. And I, I just love the workshops because the reason I love workshops is that you get to paint for three solid days, unencumbered by telephone calls, anything else. You get to bury yourself in, in the world of pastels and paint. And, and it's really a great feeling to be able to just go there and paint for three solid days. And I'm looking forward to the next class, which is taught by Karen Margulis. And uh, I don't know who else is coming, but I think Karen's the, the first one that's coming in April. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, just last month, here's the flyer for a show that I did. Let me let me get rid of this. I don't know why that's there. This is a show that I had at the Molly Cove Library. And how that happened is it's a set of coincidence. I uh, I'm a member of the um, PAG group, and we had a show at the library. And I had a couple of paintings there and um at the end of the show, the librarian, one of the librarians asked me if I would paint a painting of the Mulligan Cove Library for a woman named Pat Fultz. And Pat was a volunteer uh, librarian. And through her dedication to selling used books, people donate used books to the library. And then the, the library sells the books at their... Uh, monthly book sale and over the past 20 years she's raised over two million dollars from selling used books so they wanted to give her um something so the librarian asked me if i would paint a painting of the amalgam library and so i said yeah i'd love to do that so i painted the painting of the amalgam cove library we presented it to pat Foltz, and uh Another head of the library at the time said, T. Mike, do you mind if, if uh, you would do a, sh would you like to do a show at the Malaga Cove Library? He says, yeah, I'd love to do a show. So uh, she, uh, that was about two years away. She says, we're booked until two years, but we can give you a December date in 2023. So I said, that's fine. That'll give me plenty of time to paint. So we just hung the show. We took it down uh, just oh, last week, a couple of weeks ago. And we had a good turnout. And I sold over $10,000 in paintings at the show. And so um, I, I told them at the time that I would like to donate uh, part of the funds to um, the library, and part of the funds to Destination Art. So... I haven't gotten the check yet, but supposedly uh, they're going to be, be mailing me a check about about that show, which turned out to be kind of a fun show. And uh, <clears throat> my prior to my getting into pastels, I used to do a lot of sketching, and uh, I've got these books like this. That's that this that particular sketchbook is sketchbook number thirteen, 
And I always take a sketchbook with me on my trips. And I put in little stickers of where I've been to, you know, and things like that. And I usually do sketches of where I've been. That's one of my sketches. That's, um, I we walked part of the Santiago de uh, Composta. It's a, it's a trip in Northern Spain where a lot of people walk in. And so these are sketches that I've done at, at during my travels. And I've got 20 of these books now. And I love these books. And because of those books, during COVID, I published this book. And Lynn was helped me tremendously with this book. She edited the entire book for me. And I had a friend that showed me how to put these pages together. And so that's how the book got started. And a good friend of mine that used to print my Christmas cards did all the printing for me, and he did it at cost. So I printed um, 300 copies, and uh, over the years, I've sold and given away the copies. I've got three left now, so that's what I've been doing. So today, I thought I would do um, a quick demo, and... I'm going to be doing an ink underpainting. And what started me in ink underpainting was this article in the Pastel Journal by, by this um, woman. Her name is uh, Lorinda O'Connor. And she's going to be teaching a workshop for us at the Pastel Society sometime in August. So I just can't wait to, to take that class because I've been on top of Marine to try to get her to, to come out to, to teach a class, but she's had some problems with her health and she wasn't able to do that. But this year she offered to come out, so um, she's going to be teaching a class. And when I saw this article about inking, I decided to try it and I fell in love with it and I never start a painting without an ink underpainting now. I used to do watercolor underpainting. I've done acrylics. I've done uh, alcohol. But for me, uh, ink is the way to go. I mean, uh, I just love it. And uh, so I thought I would do this quick demo of this scene and show you exactly how I go about doing it. And... Uh, Mike, is there any particular um, ink that you like to use? And um, do you... No, not really. I started using real fancy inks. Uh -huh. The small ones uh, that cost like $6 for a small little bottle. Sure. But now I've got this. It's a... Oh, okay. I flick. That particular, I think it's 16 ounces of ink. Costs nice. Eight dollars. Okay, you know, cool. And so what I do is I fill these little, um, you know, those little preserved bottles that you get in restaurants? Yep. That's what I do. I, I fill that with ink mm -hmm. and keep it, keep it that way. Then I've got a ready supply of, of wet ink ready to go. Nice. And uh, the way I apply my ink, I like these brushes like this. Why? Wow. Nice thick like brushes. Wide synthetic type brushes. Okay. They're inexpensive. You can buy them at the uh, artist supply warehouse for about four or five dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. Synthetic, and uh, I like the fact that they've got that nice sharp, flat cut that you can cut with. And so, uh, Mike, is I'm like sorry, did you say... Huh? What size are those brushes? Uh, I've got them in all kinds of different sizes. Uh, let me show you. These are all the different sizes I got. Okay. This is a this is about a half inch, and that's about a 
maybe an inch and a half. That's about an inch, this one right there. And, uh, you know, after you start painting with it, you decide, like this one here has got that angle one. I like the angle. And turn me onto that. Yeah. So that when you kind of work that way, you can kind of be flat to the paper. Whereas with these, you got to be, you know, like that, straight on. So, so um, let me start. Oh, Mike, just could you tell us what surface you're painting on? Okay, this is um, UART 500. Great, thank you. UART 500. Uh, I did a little quick sketch of what it's going to be. It's kind of rough, sloppy. Mm -hmm. But I like to start sloppy. I like dripping inks and, you know, things like that. Yeah, I'm going to switch over on this side because I like to work this way. And uh, see all that dark up there? I'm going to put that in there like that. I don't think I can see the picture of the little picture. Oh yeah, let me show you. Yeah, uh, that's off the off camera. Camera. Oh, it is. How yeah. Come? Okay. Let's put it below. There. Now we can see it. I'll put it right here. How's that? Perfect. You could put it. You could tape it on the right side too, and we could still see it. Here. Yeah, on the right side. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll do that. There we go. Thanks. See how bold that is? I mean, you can't get pastel like that. And yeah, it was with was that color. You can just kind of splash it all over the place and not have to be too careful. Uh, there's some darks up here, which I'm going to put in. Like that. Kind of gives you an idea of, of somewhat of what's, what it's going to look like. There's some pine trees in here, which I'm going to kind of, kind of show like that. That's kind of like the water line. I'm going to put that in. We've got a dark sky up here. So that's, that's that. Excellent. Uh, it looks kind of sloppy, but you know, it gives you a nice bowl. I mean, for me, if you don't have good darks in a painting, a painting just kind of goes flat for me anyway. Mm -hmm. I like to have darks. Uh, let me show you a painting I did yesterday at Destination Art. I was at Destination Art, one of my favorite painting spots. And this is a, about an hour and a half painting that I did. It's in PV. It was a picture that I took in the fog looking down a street. And it shows several layers of these eucalyptus trees. And so I decided to, to give it a shot at painting it. And uh, I kind of used a, a bunch of purples and pinks. And that's how it came out. It's beautiful. Uh, so let's see how this one's going to come out. What I do after that is I have this little hair dryer. And I... Come in and just give it a shot. And as it dries, it kind of turns kind of gray. That is the quietest hair dryer I've ever not heard. 
It is quiet. Is, that on? is it on? Is it on? Is that? It's not really on. That's what. Okay. <laughs> it's a secret. This is what I use for a, a paintbrush for my next phase of underpainting. It's a it's a cleaning sponge. I buy these at the ninety nine cent store, and you can get a pack of three for ninety uh, for a dollar and a quarter. And it's just a, a cellulose sponge, and I cut mm -hmm. them into squares. And so let's start with uh, some of the colors that we're going to show. So you can kind of just splash it on. You don't have to be that careful. What are the what's your favorite um pastel you're using now? Oh well these are the blue earth ones. These are wonderful. They're just these little squares like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. Yeah. I like these. Um mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I like, of course, the Nelliers, and um, here's, here's my favorite color right here. It's that uh, purple color uh, that um, Terry Ludwig has, and Sennelier now is making this. And I like Sennelier's, and uh, let me show you what that looks like. That dark kind of, that dark purple. So uh, let's kind of put this up in here, purple up in there. There's some orange in here, which I'm going to put in. Like that. Let me put some gray up, blues up in here. Like that. And the, Lynn, remember those sticks you gave me? Yes, I yes I do. Uh, that, from that's France? it. That's all I, I've got I, left. I brought you that from France, from yes, Sennelier. Look at, that, look at that color. I mean, it's a gorgeous color. Look at that. Wow. Oh, I just love that color. I'd like to go back and get some more of those. And uh, I got to get the right color for this water. Here, so I'm going to kind of come in with something like that. So, and there's some yellow back in there. Now, now watch what happens when you when you take this. Is you can kind of like, can I just stroke it across and kind of blend the colors together? Mike, see now you almost have a finished painting with it with, without doing anything. It's almost wow, and that's just a regular sponge. That's just a sponge, yeah. And how do you keep it from picking up and contaminating some of the other areas, like when you crossed over the turquoise? Yeah, you just gotta kind of be careful. Okay, and, use and, different uh, parts of the sponge. In different parts of the sponge, but okay, it's just, it's just fantastic. How wow, you can love it. And then, like, for instance, this area here has got some green trees in here. So I'm going to kind of come in here with and put some greens in here. So you can kind of take this sponge. And you can kind of see where the green trees are going to be. But it's pretty much a finished painting already. So all you got to do now, basically, is just kind of add the detail. So... I'm going to come in here and put some purple <clears throat> like that. Uh, put some greens up in here. And I'm going to put a little bit of this in here. 
and I'm going to use this to kind of sponge it out a little bit. And I'm going to take um, you know, like this green. Uh, it's a little bit too dark. I got to I got to get the right color for that tree. Uh, maybe this. Kind of shows you where the pine trees are going to go, and uh, the the part that's really exciting for me is that little bit of gold right there. So I've got to get the right gold for that. Maybe this one here. See how that kind of punches it out? I'm going to come in here now and put a little bit of that different color in here. And these orange orange stripes in there are really exciting to me. Like that. Just, there's a little bit of gold back in here. I'm going to tone that down a little bit like that. And uh, let's see what else. I'm going to get uh, a little darker green. My pastel box is not the greatest. Something like that. And I'm going to get this uh, purple color. And put, let me get a, this tea spinner. Kind of important to get this nice sharp line in here. So I'm going to put that right in. See how that kind of brings out that horizon line? Really nice. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to put a little purple back in here. And I'm going to come in here, do that. And the nice part about that is the reflection of these of the yellow on the water. I'm going to put that in there. There's a little bit of green in the water. Let's see if I have the right green. You never have the right color. The right green. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, wait till you go to the candy store. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. There's some orange in here. Now I'm going to come in here. This is a trick that Tony Elaine taught me is to use a ruler. Now this uh, part here, I want to pop that out even more. Now let's work on the, this backdrop here. There's some of this uh, more orangey brownish color. Now I'm just kind of using a light touch. I'm not burning it in that much. But the water really is that turquoise. Now I'm going to come in now with this lens. 
Put a little bit more, uh, something like that. You can see I'm not that particular about particular colors. I just, more of a value than anything. But I, I like to kind of come in now and kind of cut in that edge. Now, you can see over here in the picture, it's a little lighter. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Is a little bit lighter. And I'm going to come in here with a little light purple. A little light purple. I'm really a, a fan of purple. I'm going to use maybe this color. Where's a light blue? I had a light blue here. Oh, here, here's one. Nope. Now you can take that sponge and kind of work it around. Let's get a little, get a little back in here. And now let's get a dark green. Something like this one. Okay. Oh, I know what we're missing. A little pink. A little pink up here. Let's define this a little bit better. And uh, let's put a little bit of this in the water. Okay, that's about it. We can kind of, I don't know how long it took, but let's get a little turquoise in the sky. So that's that. That's wow. my interpretation of that scene. That's amazing, Mike. You're getting a lot of great comments in the chat. Wow. So people say, love all your colors. Such great mark making. That's Tony's turquoise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Beautiful. Anyway, it, uh, so you know, you don't really have to spend a lot of time on a painting. It's just impulsively just put down what you feel and not have to worry about all the little details. When you, when you look at this, see all those little details up there and all of that, you don't have to, you can just put it in with a broad stroke and use that sponge. I mean, that sponge is one, wonderful. 
that was, that's the only thing I did as far as, as smearing was with was with the sponge. Every, other than that, it was just a matter of just down the mark. And you know, when you lightly scumble over something, you kind of get that reflective light from below coming through. So I like to go uh, dark and put the lights over the dark. It always that's a successful uh, transition rather than going light and having to put darks over the light it, it kind of buries the color whereas if you put the the light over the dark it makes the whole thing sparkle and for me anyway and so like this water here you can kind of come in and even put another different different kind of a yellow over the top of it like that so it's just Gives you a nice reflective feeling about it, about the water. And you can kind of come in like in up in here. If you wanted to add a little more detail, you can show a little bit of the um, the mountain. When you're taking a little bit of a color like this. Kind of gives you a little bit more definition of the, of the mountain, you know? Anyway, that's it. Any questions? Wow. Done in record time. Okay, who has questions? You can unmute yourself to ask questions. It, this isn't a question, but what I love, Mike, is that you use your photo, but you don't. You're not a slave to it. Right. Right. And I think most of us, I think we run into that issue not being a slave. Yeah, you can't be a slave to the to the painting. Otherwise, you become a copycat. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to be a copycat. You want to become an artist. And to become an artist, you can't be a copycat because if you become a copycat, you're going to be a slave to that that photograph and you're going to be a copycat. You're going to have to detail everything out just the way that photo is and you you fail to become an artist that way. So be, to become an artist, you have to be like the the um, the uh, Picasso and Monet and all these guys. They were deadly against realism. They wanted to 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 um, kind of march to their own own tune. So that's what mm -hmm. they did. And so to become an artist, you have to march yeah, to your own tune. I tell everybody, you can't change the way you are. So if you're a neat freak and you want to paint everything exactly the way it is, go for it. But put in your own little twist, you know, that gives it your own personality. Uh, and uh, or if you're a, a freeloader like me, uh, you have to kind of find your little niche. And um, it took me a while to find it, but I finally found the way that makes me happy painting. And I like to paint quick. I, I don't like to spend a lot of time on my paintings. I go through a lot of paper. I, I keep UART in business because I pro probably buy 300 sheets of paper from them every year. And uh, of the 300 sheets, I probably throw away 200 of those where I brush them off. Mm -hmm. And so... I think um, if I paint one painting out of four, that's good. I'm happy. And so I think a lot of people, what they try to do is make everything they paint uh, like the, the, their showstopper, you know, and, and you can't do it. Nobody can paint a, a, a painting 100% of the time that you're going to be happy with. You just can't do it. There's just no way you can if you're an artist. If you if you're trying to find a niche, like this painting right here, I'll, uh, I'll hang it on the wall or keep it in my room, and I'll probably spend another 15 minutes on it, and then it'll be done. And I'll look at it again, and if I'm not happy with it, I'll just brush it off and start over again. And 
Let me show you. These these are my brushes that I brush off the paintings with. <laughs> nice. <laughs> See how worn out they are? They're like nubs now because I go in there and I just go in there and brush off all the pastels until I get down to the original sandpaper and then I can reuse it again. But you know what? Reusing paper is not the same as if you started from a virgin piece of pastel paper like we started here. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same. You lose about 20% of, of, the, of the paper. So <clears throat> the way I like to use my used pastels, I, I take them into like uh, my 2G class at Destination Art, and I can experiment. I can play around with it because it's it's nothing precious. Mm -hmm. So I can I can you know dab things around and be free. And the one I showed you there was on a, on a piece of um, recycled paper, and I wasn't happy with the way it came out, but it's okay, you know. Um, I like the way this one came out because it's just bold and straightforward. You know, it's, it's not a whole bunch of lines in there. And it's got some decent colors. And uh, the the artist, when I started first painting, <clears throat> I took a class with a, a woman named Donna Yeager. She came out to do a workshop for us. And uh, I didn't know Dilly about pastels. And I said, Donna, I got, you know, what, what would you do with this painting? And so she took this this bright orange and she went shoom right across my paper. And I thought, that's what I would do, Mike. And, <laughs> and it just, it, it just like opened my eyes and wow, you know, it took a lot of, lot of effort and, 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 uh, you know, to, to, to do it and just to do it because you didn't know how it was going to come out, but that's what you have to do once in a while. Just come in and just, Put a bowl mark in there and and see what happens. You just never know. Well, you, also, uh, Mike makes his own pastels. Pardon me? You make your own pastels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Guess what? Look at that. Maybe you could quickly show how you gather your stuff. Okay. That. Yeah. Those are all crumbs from my pastel set see them look at yep so now i'm going to take that now those see how i kept them kind of more in the orange orange and pink mm -hmm. color i'll take that and throw it into this oh that's just uh there and i take this and grind them all up Mortar and pastel. And then you 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 take a spritzer with um alcohol and you put it in there mm -hmm. and you grind it up. And uh, let me show you some of my finished product. These are the ones I made. Mm -hmm. They look like they're out of the store case. <laughs> Are, these are the yeah and so you know i mean you figure this stick right here that's a that's a four dollar stick of pastel that you made for free mm -hmm. you know? and look at the nice colors you can get you can get this nice rich red right here look at that one uh i love that blue yeah, I did too. That's great. Let's put that in the sky. <laughs> put some in there. Yeah. And uh, this little purple color. Mm -hmm. Some of that purple in there. Okay, I was going to let everybody know, Mike, that um, if they go to... Great yellow. I put it in the chat, but if you if you go to our new website we have the workshops listed we have theme thursday listed under events and the other thing is we have a really great blog 
and there's like so far only like three of us on the blog but what happens is Pam takes what we give her and she fixes it <laughs> and <does. laughs> yeah so anyhow it's beautifully done thank you Pam and thank you Lupe it's just terrific and also, it's nice if you guys go on and leave comments, which you can do. There's a little box below, you know. And so I've worn out all the amazing, wonderful, fabulous <laughs> comments. I have to come up with some new ones. I'm going to put in a little brighter orange is, here. Is is Mike's demonstration on how to put those um, recreated pastels online on our website? Oh, that's a good question. You know, if you've never had a class on it, it it's a, such an easy class. I, I took a class with Dave Warfelman, and that's how I learned how to do it. I think there's uh, a video of Dave doing it on the way, on the um, YouTube. On YouTube, I'm right. Sure, uh, Mike's on there, too, with making it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Great. Mike, do you only use black ink? Do you use the other color ink? No, I just use black. Yeah. Just, that's it, right there. It's um, okay. it's waterproof India ink, and uh, until I found that, I was using this Winsor Newton ink. It comes in a small little bottle with a little rubber diaper on it. I was paying six dollars a piece for those things, and I. I saw these at Blick. I thought, wow, that's only $8 or $6. So I bought it. And i that's all I've been using now is this Blick. Uh, and its it does the job. Most of it you cover up anyway. But, you know, part of, some of that is the original black. Some of that up in here is still the original black. But most of it you cover up. But it gives you a good roadmap to, to, do, to be bold. And put in some darks, you know, like that dark right there. That's a real key element of this painting right there, is that dark. And, Definitely. Uh, That's beautiful. And so without without having that ink, you're not gonna you're not gonna have it. You know, you're just gonna be timid and start putting in some pastels. They're gonna be lighter than you think normally put in. But when you go in with that black ink, wow, you're you're making a statement. Wow, that's going to be that's going to be my dark areas and and so it's a, it's to, for me it's it's the greatest way to start a painting. So so give it a shot. You just never know, you know. Um, I've asked uh, like I've asked Joe if he's started. You know Joe Mancusa. I've asked Joe. I said Joe, have you started? Have you used ink yet? He says no, no, I really haven't. I've just been kind of doing my own thing, you know, and so. A lot, that's what a lot of artists do. They get comfortable in 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 the situation they're in, and they they they're afraid to to go out of that that little comfort zone. And sometimes you have to make that big step and say, "Hey, I'm going to try something different." And you're going to find out that all of a sudden your paintings are going to look different because you started doing something different, you know. And so, for me, I'm stuck on ink right now, but I'll probably go back to maybe uh, acrylics again, because I, I like the acrylics uh, because you can get some big, strong colors. But the, the thing I didn't like about acrylics is that it covers up the sanded surface. So when you start applying pastels on it, you, you don't get the rich colors over the top of that acrylic. Whereas with ink, uh, it doesn't cover up that sanded surface. So the, you know, one of the things I'm gonna try next it's colored inks. They've got they, they they've got inks in various different colors. Mm -hmm. I might try getting like um, the primary and secondary colors in ink, and and basically doing an underpainting with with that and see how it turns out. You just never know, you know. It could be uh, it could lead to something different, and so I'm always open for something new, and so. Whenever I go on my travels, the first thing I do in any country is I always go into an art store or a stationery store because you never know what you're going to find. You can find the ideal ink, ink pin that mm -hmm. you've been looking for, 
or a pan or a new set of uh, pastels, new colors, new um, sketching surfaces. One of the things I just found, which I've been telling everybody about, is this. And it's made by Progresso. And they're cheap. They're like a dollar a piece. And there's no, you don't ever have to sharpen this because there's no, there's no um, wood in it. It's all, it's all pigment. It's like a big stick of crayon. That one right there. And it's a perfect thing to sketch with. I just love to sketch with it. What is that made of, Mike? What's it called? Is it? It's, uh, made, in, it's, it's made in Portugal and it's called Progresso. And you can buy it at the Art Supply Warehouse. They're about 85 cents a piece there. Is it a wax based or? Yeah, what? yeah it's kind of like Prismacolor. It's like colored oh, pastel. Okay. okay, but that works with the pastel, huh? Over the yeah. pastel or under? It's almost identical to... Um, to uh, a Prismacolor pen. I've got several different colors of it. There it is. The, then, uh, I like I like to buy the dark colors because when you sketch on it, you can kind of see the lines. But this is my favorite color right here, this navy blue. This one, I like that one. You can draw with it and it and it gives you a good 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 line. Let me show you. See? You can shade with it. You can sketch with it. Is Pretty, it waxy? But it's very it's waxy, yeah. It's waxy. And does the pastel go over that? It goes over it perfect. It goes over it just Oh wow. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Interesting how many different fantastic. things that you can do. That's amazing. That, that, that's what I did the the sketch with on this one, uh, this particular color. That's the color I used. This purple color. It kind of matches that right there. So, anyway, uh, I see one thing. What I want to do here is I want to put a dark line right here. It kind of gives you a good base. So, so that's what I kind of look at as I look at it on my sketch. After I've done the sketch, what else can I do to it? So, anyway, it was fun. So nice. Does that mean we're ending early tonight because you're such a fast painter, Mike? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Any other questions? Why don't we talk about uh, your beginner class, Lynn? Well, we have almost 20 people signed up. It's going to be at the church this Saturday at Riviera where we have our meetings. And we're really thrilled to have so many beginners coming in. And we have... Uh, a team of teachers that are going to be demonstrating. Are, are, are you things. are you supplying materials? Uh, a paper uh, we thing? we are supplying paper. They get a brand new set of Mungo sixty four wow. color pastels. They get to take home with them, wow. and they paid a twenty five dollar materials fee to cover some of the costs of the materials. But otherwise, the teaching is all um, on the Pastel Society of Southern California because. Our mission is to educate the public. And the more people we can educate about the beauty and luscious nature of yeah. pastel, the better. Yeah. yeah. So we may get 25 new members after this Saturday or 20, you know, something like that. I think I think that should be kind of a yearly thing that we do. I think. Well, we yeah, we used to do it yearly and then we had the pandemic. So we got a right. little behind, but we are going to do it yearly. That's one of our missions. And we've got so many exciting things going on right now. I know Chris Stillians um, was able to just join us. He's our president. Um, Chris, we have our here? big member show coming up. You can enter. Are you with us? Yeah, Chris should be there. Can you, Chris? Chris? 
Okay, maybe he's working on unmuting. He was having a hard time getting in on his computer, so he joined on his phone tonight. But give him a minute to see if he can unmute. But in the meantime, the member show is open for entries. Everyone who's a member of the Pastel Society is guaranteed one piece in the show. So make sure you guys are, you know, entering. We have a novice category. Don't be shy. If you're a beginner, we don't care. We have a novice category, silver which is kind of like emerging artists and gold, which is established artists. So we want to get a really great showing for our show. The opening reception is April 13th. We're going to have a lot of fun art activities going on and a quick draw. So this oh. is a great spring for us. So this is the member show, not your make your mark. This no, is this is the member show. Member show. Okay. The I think make, Yeah. Make your mark is a virtual show right. in July. And that's, you'll hear more about that, but that's an international open show. So anyone can enter. You don't have to be a member of PSSC to enter that one. But this one is our special member show. We will have every spring. I think everybody should enter that show. I yeah. mean, no matter where you are, you know, because yeah. we all have to start somewhere. And uh, I remember how intimidated I was when I first started painting and uh, <laughs> go for it, you know, and after a while, uh, it becomes kind of like second nature. <laughs> Mike, we thank you for your generosity and sharing everything that you know about pastel with our group and with this YouTube, because that means the public can watch it as well. Why don't we raffle this painting off somehow? Wow. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Maybe at our next meeting, which is March 9th. Do I have the date right? I believe that's our March of the Mentors, our next general meeting. Let me just check the date to be sure. Yep. Yeah. March 9th in Redondo Beach. Why don't we have it there, Mike? You mind? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank no, you. Yeah. My goodness. Let's wrap thank you. So you'll need to come to the meeting. I know it's a drive for some people, but we will have raffle tickets. And I myself want to win this beautiful painting because I painted Convict Lake and it doesn't look anything like this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Um, That's your painting, Lynn. What's that? Did you, were you painting along? No, not tonight, but I did paint this in plein air with, with Mike a year and a half ago. We went to the high Sierras on a plein air painting trip and I did paint from the shores of this lake and the water was that turquoise. It was just gorgeous. So I'll have to bring my painting to the next meeting. And, oh, somebody asked if you have to have, you bring your entries in person. For the member show, you're going to enter online. If you go to online juried shows right now, you should have gotten an email. Mm -hmm. You can enter online, upload your images. If you need help, let one of us know. Whatever is accepted, which is guaranteed at least one, you can either bring it in, have a friend bring it in, or ship it in to the take-in on April 6th. So there's lots of different options to get your piece there. And it's going to be where we have our meetings, only in the upstairs Ocean View Galleries, where we used to have Rejoice in Art. So it's going to be a beautiful venue for our show. And we hope everybody will, will enter. Don't be shy. If you need help, you want someone to look at your pieces and help you decide what to enter, you can always email us at info at pastel socal. Is that right? Dot org. Pam? Yep. yep. And we will help you out. So the other thing to mention, Lynn, is uh, Marty has T-shirts and merchandise that she brings to the meetings. That's right. And you want to bring some cash so you can buy raffle tickets. <laughs> right. Definitely. Yeah, I sold a lot of those. Do you guys want me to order more? And bring I them to the meetings? Yes. I, I say yes. I haven't myself. bought mine yet. <laughs> okay. I bought a black one online. Oh, Good. No. That I mean, that's kind of how most people do it, but I can purchase a few more if I get the okay by the board. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to Chris. He can't unmute. He told me he's having a hard time unmuting tonight, so don't worry about it. What is the deadline for um, entering the show? Because I did not, I don't know how I missed it, I but I didn't. March 13th. Get an invite. Oh, Maureen, is that you speaking? Yeah, Maureen McHale. Okay, Maureen, I will resend the link to you and we need to check your email. Um, okay. Please put your email in the chat. I want to double check it on MailChimp to make sure you're getting it. But the deadline to enter, I believe, is March 13th. 
What is it? I think it's the 13th. Or is it the 10th? Um, it's one the 15th. Hold on, let me double check. I don't want to give any wrong information. I have the 10th down. Yeah, March 10th. March 10th. Okay. March 10th is okay. the deadline at midnight Pacific time. So you have over a month. So yeah. even if Plenty you go in and enter something now, you can always add more to your entry later. If you paint something that you like better, you can enter as many as you wish. You get two entries for $30. And then you can add more entries for a little bit additional. If you have one painting you love and you want it in the show, just enter one. That'll be the one because you get one in. So yeah, just, you. yeah. Somebody, Bill, somebody has a question. It says Bill, but I know you're not Bill. What I'm is not Bill. <laughs> I'm Vincenza. And I, I just pulled up the um, website and it says March 31st is the final day to submit entries. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh-oh. So 31st. I think I'm looking at the right thing. Oh, hold on. Let me. The 14th annual member show. Oh, Festival. no, no. This is the 15th annual. That must be <laughs> last year's. The last year's. Yeah, okay. we're on the 15th annual already. Yeah. All Go right. to Pastel. Well, you have to enter it by March 10th. Yeah. Okay. Go March to pastelsocal.org and right on the homepage. We have a new like website. So if you're looking at the old website, it was PSSC website dot org it should be directing you to the new one yeah okay pastel okay pastel okay. i'm on the old one. Oh, so no before, before pastel i let so you cal dot org yeah okay pastel so cal dot and the link is right there on the home page right yeah. okay sorry yeah. late sorry no no me. worries i'll put that in the chat so it's march 10th and you guys again i can't emphasize this enough if you have a question or you need help please email us at info at pastelsocal.org. Right, um, I have uh, just one other question. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Am I eligible for this yes. kind of contest? Oh, Absolutely. Yes, if, just, and I'm just a member that I just signed up for your group. I wasn't juried into your group. I'm not, you know. Doesn't matter. That yeah. doesn't matter. You you are guaranteed one entry. You'll just need to send it to us by UPS or FedEx, and then we will send it back to you unless it sells, and then we won't send it back to you. <laughs> but it can be not for sale. It doesn't have to be for sale either. Okay. You can put it okay. as a not for sale if it's one that you want to have returned. Yeah, you know. You know Either that or put a high price tag on it. If you're <laughs> no, really. what, I, what I wanted to say about Mike's um, work is that he, no, no mark was precious. And I think sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but um, we, we approach it with the preciousness right. that every right. mark is going right. to be yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And right. he's just slapping stuff on there. And I'm thinking, isn't that <laughs> great? You know, that looseness came through and even though it's not a plain air piece it it has the feeling of a plain air piece and that's you know what we want to learn when we're painting plain air right so right yeah thank that's, you that's all. i'm gonna i'm gonna actually sign off because it's nearly 11 o'clock here <laughs> oh, no. uh -oh. thank you for joining, joining us. us thank you so much you. thank you for joining in thank you, thank you. nice meeting nice you work, yeah nice, nice to meet you. you good luck we look forward Bye. to seeing your work thank I you I do have a question. Um, I have sent out a thought that maybe we could do a a discussion about um, AI, artificial intelligence, that's mm -hmm. taking images from of paintings and then they incorporate it into their their um, intelligence. That's a great idea. Right. And I had suggested I sent something to Margie about that and. Um, they have two applications that we can put on. And I think something we might want to start doing uh, and promoting it, especially if you're selling your paintings, you probably really want to do it because then it can say, Mike Ishikawa's designs. Let's mm -hmm. I have one that looks like my Sh Mike Ishikawa <laughs> uh, with a dog and a cat in a mountain and a, and a stream. And then they'll look like Mike Ishikawa's. I just... Well... Want that happens. What can I tell you? No, no, Actually, I'm just telling you, I think there is a big, no, I'm joking. No, you no. want to go to Joe Saberi, <laughs> J-O-E-C-I-B-E-R-E. 
He said sci art and he does a whole class on AI. Oh, he does. Yeah. And okay. he has a, a five hour workshop and he tells you what to bring. And then in, in front of you, he'll speak into a microphone and says, okay, I'd like a little Joe Sabere, a little surrealism by, you know, whoever, some impressionism by Cindy. <laughs> it melts into this fabulous painting wow well it's i think it's a great scary. topic i think it's a great topic for a theme thursday because people are using ai for reference photos you can just say you have a dream okay. and you say you know give me this creation the scene and mm -hmm. then you can take components of it as reference if you want to but anyway I love that idea. I think we should have. Yeah, I think there is a topic. I've just seen a little research. And I heard a story about it and I started, uh, I went to the Chicago Art Institute, which has the free download application that you can apply. I have not been successful with it yet because I haven't spent enough time on it, but I'm really concerned because as we upload our images and let's say we're, we're nascent uh, painters, but maybe in five, 10 years, you're doing really good. And all of a sudden you're going to have this, you know, plethora of paintings and, you know, now you're yeah. Lynn Attig, the I famous would... Lynn Attig. And then everyone's going to be just I would like be flattered her. if they're going to use my paintings. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want them to do yeah. that. Wait so. a minute, let's, let's do have a topic on that. We can do some research and we can look at it from all different angles. I like that idea. What do you think, Margie? I think it's great. Actually, I think I might ask Joe to uh, upload my painting with a limb. <laughs> and a Maureen. Yeah. And it's sort of like falling down a rabbit hole. Oh. Because my friends who have gotten involved in it, yeah. it's so magical that all of a sudden you realize you got up at eight o'clock, you had a few snacks, and it's time to go to bed. I mean, really. <laughs> It's yeah. like being put in a hypnotic state. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as, as artists, um, you need uh, images to paint. And uh, so many people that I know uh, go out and photograph, and you look at the photographs, and you know it's going to be a lousy painting to begin with, but they, they persevere, and they spend hours on it, knowing that, I know that it's not going to be a good painting, but they don't know it yet because they started off on the wrong base. And just yesterday, I uploaded a bunch of paintings, uh, photographs that I want to paint. And these are it right here. Mm. And uh, I, uh -huh. these, are, these are paintings that I want to do. And so I've got that whole list of paintings. So that's about a year's worth of paintings that I want to do. Wow. And so these are all paint uh, scenes that I like uh, at the church, uh, a little um, a boat in Vietnam that I've done. And so I think uh, one of the things I think we should talk about in Theme Thursdays is um, selecting the right photograph. What photograph do you use to paint? You know, maybe the photograph that you have needs to be cropped down so that it becomes a more condensed painting rather than this big landscape, you know, that's really hard mm -hmm. to paint. Like this particular painting right here, it's, it's a vineyard in um, Spain. It was a big painting. It was a big photograph and I condensed it down to this, a building with some, some vines in the front. So composition, working yeah. on composing yeah. your photographs a little bit yeah. better. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Good idea, Mike. And so, like, you've seen that one, Lynn. We went there. That's oh, yeah. Story. Oh, yeah. It was a big okay. painting, a big picture, but I condensed it down to that because I know that's going to be a good painting. Mm -hmm. See, darks and things. And so I think that's a, that's a good subject for another Theme Thursday is what to paint. What yeah. selection? How do you select the, the right photograph that you want to paint? That's a great one. And if anybody else has ideas, I love that, Maureen. I love that, Mike. If you have ideas for Theme Thursday, please email us or let us know if you think of them later. And if you would like to present something, you don't have to do a demo. You can just present a concept and we can discuss it. Right. So all of our members are welcome to choose a topic. I'm sure um, 
Margie will be very happy to talk to you and get you on the list. Very happy. Once a month. So, you know. Also, uh, I think Christine and a few other people uh, told me about Notanizer, which is an application which I highly recommend. And, uh oh, okay. That'd be another good theme Thursday the Notanizer and how to make a Notan. Uh, yeah, exactly. And also Art Grid, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, Mike was just talking about composition. So you can put your, upload your image to it and then you can grid it. And it's really helped me immensely with, I think, my artwork in terms of composition. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend those two applications. Yeah. Right. Like this photograph right here, you can grid it off. Yeah, so exactly. You, down, you can take it from a small image to a large image. Mm -hmm. You know where the, where, the, where the center of the painting is, which is right there, which is about right there. You know, mm -hmm. and so when you grid it off, it makes it easier to transpose. Mm -hmm. Other than, you know, a lot of I've seen people, what they do is they take uh, uh, this graphite paper and they actually trace it onto their their drawing it's it's a way to get it on there but in a way it kind of diminishes your 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 artistic skills because you're 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 really relying on a crutch you know and and i think you should develop your own sketching skills by mm -hmm. being able to take this and present it into that so Anyway. Mike, there's another, Mike, this reminds me, when I went to IAPS a couple of years ago, there was a product called Art Graph, A-R-T-G-R-A-F. And it reminds me of what you're doing with the ink because it's like this big, chunky piece of black ink or brown or white, and, and you can use it to make giant marks like the ink without having to use a brush. Oh. I'm going to put that down here in the chat because... Uh, one of the best paintings I did of a landscape, I used this art graph. And this anyway, look it up. they have it at Jerry's Artorama, I believe, as well. I used too. This is uh, uh, Tony Elaine got me onto this. It's what is that called? It's a stick of graphite. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe that's what this is. This says it's graphite. water soluble. And uh, you can take it. Uh, probably the same thing it's probably graphite art graph sounds like graphite there's a boat painting i was going to do but you can kind of come in and look what happens see oh yeah same that's what the art graph is like it's something you hold in your hand and you just yeah slide it along so you guys google that because i'm trying to show you a picture of it but it's not really <laughs> it's not really sh there it is art oh, graph. There you go. yeah anybody ever used that yes okay What's your... I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, Cindy, that's you. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I love it. So many, mm -hmm. so many options. I love the tips and techniques we're getting. Yeah. yeah, there is a lot of things you can do, and uh, I think uh, when this gal comes, Lorinda, mm -hmm. I'm going to be the first. To, I hope I'm the first one to sign up for <laughs> class because I want to be in that class. Oh. Uh, I just want to be in that class. <laughs> you. Well, I, hope, I hope we get like 75 people so she can stay out here for a whole month. <laughs> That'd be nice. By the way, how many of you are going to IAPS? Raise your hand. We're going to, I think, have a really good turnout this year. We're going to learn a lot of cool techniques and it's going to be a super fun time. The biggest pastel party on the planet. How about the plein air convention? Is anyone attending the plein air convention, plein air live or in person? Marty, are you going live or in person? I'm going in person to the Smoky Mountains. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. That's going to be great. When is that? Uh, it is May around the 20th, I think. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. And I love your painting of the casino in Catalina. Thank you. you. That is, a, that's a La Papa postcard. That's going on right now, right? It just, yeah, it just uh, ended today at six o'clock oh, and it you. sold Yay! for nice. For four hundred and thirty-two dollars, and what's and it's a small size. It's a post five by seven. Oh yeah. my gosh! Congrats! Yeah, I know. I can't believe I had twenty-two bids on it for it's square crazy. inch. That's a lot I of money. It. That's a lot of money per square inch, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Hey, very Marty, exciting. so that picture behind you is one of your, it's a piece of yeah. art. It's not a photograph. No, that's right. Awesome. That was my five by seven uh, postcard. Postcard. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Beautiful. I love that's good memories of going to Catalina. Love mm -hmm. that. Congrats. Yeah, it was from a few years ago with my uh, family. That's beautiful. Wow. Anybody yeah. else doing anything really fun and exciting in the art world or otherwise? You can brag. This is your group to brag to, you know. <laughs> Uh, the the green uh green show is uh, has a reception uh, yes. Saturday yeah That's three right to, three to six at Destination Art I saw it yesterday I went in and had my own private viewing yesterday it's beautiful so. and uh, and Bernard's doing Friday morning uh kind of open session plain air I went today and uh, over at the Moonstone Beach which is Part of the boat harbor we did a little painting of the clouds and stuff but he has another session on friday friday morning so if anybody wants to paint friday mornings get a hold of bernard is that tomorrow friday or next friday well the he tomorrow he's going to be over there at moonstone beach okay from um 9 30 to 12 30. okay so thank you Right. I'm going to do a little bragging. I'm I'm starting, um, I'm going to be featured artist at the Redlands Art Association. Yay. We're upcoming on starting Saturday till March 9th. So Wonderful. I'm going to hang up my paintings tomorrow. So Wonderful. Right. Can, Cindy, can you send a little blurb to our email so that we can all, maybe we can put something on the website about that? Sure. And maybe sure. also the Destination Art Show. So sure. um Anyway, Pam, can we put something under upcoming events? Okay, that'd be great. So it's info at pastelsocal.org. Okay. Yes, I'm getting the new <laughs> email down. <laughs> great, I'll put that in the chat. And that's also stuff people should be sending to Connie so she can put in the, the newsletter. newsletter. Yes, definitely. Yeah. The brag for the newsletter. Good.org. Okay. But, well, uh, I did something crazy. I was asked to do the SCAPE newsletter, which I don't know if you guys know what SCAPE is a Southern California artist protecting the environment. Mm, nice. So uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. I hope. <laughs> hey, let us know. And also, you guys can brag at the next meeting on March 9th. We're planning to have March of the Mentors. You'll be hearing more about that. And we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And then there's a May meeting. And of course, theme Thursdays. So, yeah. Anybody else? So, who would you like to talk to about brag stuff? Connie? Well, burn about brag? Oh, Connie. Connie is the newsletter okay. editor. But you could just send it to our info at pastelsocal.org and we will forward it to her. Okay. And just say in there for the newsletter. She's always looking for content for the newsletter. So that'd be great. All right, guys. Anybody else have anything? Otherwise, we can end early tonight. I say hi to Larry, yes. who moved to Folsom. Who did? Oh, Larry, that's right. Are you signing in from Folsom? Yes, this is my front room and office. Oh my gosh. I've been to Folsom because my cousins live there. So next time I go visit them, I will look you up. Oh, definitely. Yes. Hopefully I have an actual house. Right now I'm in an apartment. Okay. It's a so, great town. It's a beautiful town. Oh, it's, it's beautiful up here. Yeah. Where I am, there's a creek right outside my door. Wonderful. So I, I look at oak trees and there were turkeys. Oh my gosh, wild turkeys. You know, I'm taking the dog for a walk and I'm going, oh my God, that's a turkey. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, good luck getting settled. We're glad you joined us tonight and I'll let oh, you know yeah. there. Yeah, I, I, things finally have calmed down. The last three weeks have been absolutely hectic. When you calm down, I think you might want to do a theme Thursday also. Maybe yeah, get yeah, I've got to get set up. I don't have, I've got one little bag of, of drawing stuff. Yeah. So I've, I've, I'm, I'm so desperate to get my studio set up right now. I Give just, yourself time. Give yourself yeah. time. But I know Margie's going to put you on the list because you are a pastel instructor. We'd love to have 
Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What I want to do is get my Zoom classes going again because that's mm -hmm. I, I miss seeing my peeps. Well, let us know. <laughs> let us know. We want to help promote all of our members. Yeah, yeah. Members. And I, I know there's a, a very active art group up here and they are very excited to have a pastel person Yay, so great. you may start seeing some new faces once i get a little more ensconced in the I area that we're spreading ourselves all around every that's time right somewhere. thank you <laughs> for someone who's uh -huh. not a, a natural you know a native californian where is Folsom? uh it's up, up by sacramento sacramento it's okay. just east of Sacramento. And no, they didn't send me to prison. There is a prison. <laughs> but it's got such a cute downtown. It's got like the old Western yeah. storefronts downtown. It's a great town. Yeah. Great town. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, you guys. Anybody else? No. Okay. We'll see oh, some Sarah, of you guys on hand? Saturday. What's that? See some Are of you guys on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Uh It'll be a busy weekend. Night, guys.